moving on and moving on up, I thought I'd update you guys all on the Lord of Cringe. And if you're wondering, Agostino, who is this Lord of Cringe? It's Lex Friedman, of course, my best friend and somebody who I have said beforehand that I'm conflicted about because I legitimately am a big fan of his podcast. I listen to it legitimately every week. I'm always checking out the clips. Um, it's legitimately one of the best researched, I feel like, podcasts out there, especially when it comes to interviews. He actually asks some very thoughtful questions. Just look at the opening question that Lex asked Mark Zuckerberg during their interview. He completely disarmed him. He got him to chuckle a bit and created a viral moment out of it, right? Genuine, raw, emotive you know sincere like cool dude he comes across as a cool dude but for whatever reason outside of his podcast he comes across like an absolute lame an absolute turbo dork an absolute loser and somebody who you can't figure out if he's being legit or if he's trolling you a good example of are his tweets that went out recently pertaining to the you know the current war going on with ukraine and russia and he says as follows i'm so grateful to have food shelter health and be surrounded by amazing, compassionate people. I will never take this for granted because at any moment it can all go away. Oh, really? I never knew that, Lex. Thanks for letting us know. Next tweet. Some things I hope the 21st century is remembered for. Hope, love, hope. You know, common themes around Lex. First space colony established. Okay. First sentient robot is built. Okay. Definitive contact with alien life. Okay. Cure and prevention of major diseases cool no world wars no world wars really lex never before reached epic levels of fun this is where i was just enough never before reached epic levels of fun who do you hang around with who are your friends who raised you i know who silicon valley types that's who would say a phrase like that right a, a person that carries a macbook under their arm a person that's got post-its over the top of their macbook a person that thinks a stand-up should last an hour a person who walks around their local san fran neighborhood with no shoes on barefooted because they want to center themselves to the earth a person who seriously thinks all bird sneakers are as good as nike's a person who has a flipping starbucks order the size of a the, you know, the length of a flipping um, shopping list of the things that they need. Minus that, soy this, this, that, blah, blah, blah. That's the kind of person who would say never before reached epic levels of fun. What does that even mean? What is fun to these guys? Eating, eating barbecue and drinking whiskey with Joe Rogan. That's fun to you. Going to see those guys perform stand-up. That's your epic levels of fun. Recording podcasts. Epic levels of fun. Hey? Waking up in the morning at 5 a.m. to go and run with flipping David Goggins running down your ear. That's fun. Sitting in a cold bath. Fun. Wanking yourself over the new Apple product. Fun. Talking about AI in, in, you know, forever and ever. Fun. Debating about a flipping Tesla bot and thinking the Tesla bot is going to save humanity when it probably is going to kill us all. Fun. Like, oh my God, this guy's infuriating, bruv. And it's so annoying because he's such a lame off the podcast of how he presents himself. But on paper, he shouldn't be. He speaks multiple languages. He's Russian. Um, he wears those black suits. He's got a black belt in jujitsu. Friends with Joe Rogan. Wildly successful podcast. Lectures at MIT. All those tick, 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 tick. Bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. But instead you see these tweets, you're like, lame, 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 lame. Like, God damn it. And another one here, another in the series of lame tweets. This is a Hall of Famer, cringe, lame, gargling of the flipping balls and nuts. Like, balls and nuts. You know, you know what I mean. Look at this tweet. I invite at Zelensky, UA, who I'd imagine is the official account of the flipping president of flipping Ukraine. And Kremlin, E, the official account of Russia each to have separate podcast conversations with me. Of course. Of course. Me. How the hell can you see what's happening? Again, next line. I'm half Ukrainian, half Russian, now American. How the hell, as a half Ukrainian, half Russian person, can you see what's happening in Ukraine and seriously sit there and think, 
this thing that we do, again, I do it at a much lower level, way less views, not as successful, you know, whatever, all those things. What? Yes, I get it. But essentially, we're talking into microphones and beaming this stuff on all these different platforms for shits and giggles for the most part. How could you feel like this medium that we're in right now, this fucking medium is somehow going to stop a war in flipping Ukraine. It's somehow going to stop Russia from bombing flipping children hospitals, maternity wards, office buildings, residential areas. How the hell do you think it's going to stop us seeing images of flipping, you know, random Ukrainian soldiers being murdered in forest somewhere with no one there to help them? How do you think that's going to stop that? Tell me. Tell me. How does that make any sense? How does that make any sense? How does it make any sense? Do you think this is going to change anything? And it's not like he's saying, oh, I feel like conversations will get us closer to healing our wounds and bringing us closer together and moving stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Let's say that's the case. All right. Let's set up a podcast for these guys to talk about the situation and we can maybe get the public to ask them questions. But no, it's not even that he's saying he wants to set up a podcast so they can talk to themselves or so they can talk to each other. He wants to be in the middle of it. He what he thinks he should be at in flipping Zelensky so that what they could get him a plane to go over to flipping Russia and bring his fucking black curtains along with him and go and record a fucking podcast. Oh, better yet, let's schedule a flipping a link up on flipping iCalendar, a Zoom kind of call, so he can go and talk this over and make sure that we don't bomb each other anymore. Come on, brother. Why are you so lame? Why are you so uncool off of the podcast? Why in that medium, you're quite cool and somebody you should maybe rate, but then off of it, you're an absolute turbo dork. Why is that? Maybe he is a turbo dork and in general, that's what it is. But I'm conflicted because legitimately, I love his podcast. His clips channel is amazing. The audio podcast of itself is great. The way he intros a show, the way he kind of puts it together, the guest he has on, really eclectic, wide-ranging people intellectual politicians designer all these different people he gets on there great amazing podcast but the dude himself is a lame-o in the in the in the i don't know turbo lame gold medal lame gold medal lame record-breaking lame-o look at this stuff i'm half you half ukraine half russian now american let's talk love is the answer oh my god God, you can tell he doesn't have any normal friends. You can tell all his friends, you know, by God's grace, because he's been given this opportunity and he's worked hard at it. He only hangs around with billionaires, um, intellectuals, authors, novelists, scientists, teach whatever people that are legitimately talk for a living and who think that their ideas are really going to save the world, right? They're not. Your ideas don't save the world. The world is more complicated than whatever love is the answer fucking means. The world's more complicated. And the world is full of pain and misery more so on a day-to-day -day on a day-to-day -day thing than anything else. Come on, man. What the hell was this guy talking about, man? Love is the answer. Sod off. Sod off. Had enough of him. Had enough. So annoying. Annoying to the tip. Tip, 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 tip top annoying. And again, it's annoying because I fucking love the show, but I can't stand the guy on social. He's annoying. And this, I don't know if this is arrogance. Um, what is it? If it's ego, hubris. I don't know what this is that legitimately makes you feel as if like your podcast is going to stop wars. Like that is nuts to me. Like it's not nuts to you. Doesn't that sound absolutely insane? Like what's he talking about? Why would your podcast stop anything? Who gives a shit about you? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, oh my God. I'd love to legitimately feel that self-important. I'd love to feel as if what I do has a meaning to so many different people. Like, yeah, I'm changing the world. Nah, I might provide some entertainment to some of you. Some of you might like, some of you might dislike, some of you might leave good comments, some of you might leave bad comments. It is what it is. But I'm not sat here thinking, yeah, I'm going to change the world. People are going to see my podcast and they're going to think, you know what? I'm going to go Berghain. Like, no, for the most part, you sit here for flipping shits and giggles like I do for everyone else. Or you hate watch it or whatever. It's not to change anything meaningful in the real world because that is far more complicated than recording a flipping podcast and uploading it onto flipping Libsyn and YouTube. Come on, man. Do yourself a favor, bruv. God damn it. These people annoy me so much. But I love them so much too. How is that possible?
How is that possible? Let me know in the comments down below if you love and hate somebody the same way that I love and hate Lex Friedman. Please let me know. And again, I don't hate the guy. I don't. I don't. I just dislike his personality on social media. It's just annoying, man. Like, ah, oh, stop being so lame. Like, be cooler. Come on. You got a black belt, man. Be cooler. What's wrong with you, bruv? Ugh. <sighs>